Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and I have a massive stack of books next to me to talk about because I am deciding to do my very first 22 books to read in 2022 which technically is the first time I can possibly do it but I've seen these videos going around where people did 21 books they wanted to read in 2021 and I thought it was a great idea. I have split this up as much as I can so the first few books I'll be talking about are classics and then after that it will get a bit more mixed in with different things that I want to read. These books are in no particular order that I want to read them in for next year, they are just all 22 books that I do want to get to. So the first one that we'll be talking about is Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is a classic author that I really want to read more of. I read A Lando by her this year and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a brilliant classic and I'm so intrigued to read more and a lot of people have said that Mrs Dalloway is one of their favourites and you also have To the Lighthouse. So I have Mrs Dalloway, I got this in a secondhand bookshop and I just thought you know what it's time I need to read it. And this one literally just explores both the hold of the past and the brighter potential of the future. The tragedy of the First World War is still a vivid presence and the constraints of time and the freedoms of mind the abuse of power, the force of love are themes that intertwine as the day unfolds. So I believe this is literally a one day and we just go through all these different things. I've just heard really good things and I'm super excited. Then we have Dante's Inferno. I will admit I'm not a massive poetry fan but this is one that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. Again this is another one that I picked up second hand and I've had this on my TBR for months and months and I just think if I put it on this list I'm actually going to read it. So it's something, as I said, I've got an interest but I'm just, I'm not a poetry gal so we'll see. Then we have some more Jane Austen. I am so excited to read the rest of her work. So one that I have is Northanger Abbey and this is actually one of the ones I was most excited to read but just never got round to and I might take part in Jane Austen July again so this probably will be saved till then but I'm really excited. I believe this one is more about kind of a comedic way of doing gothic literature. It's like Jane Austen's own spin on that and we have a very overactive imagination of our main character and it goes from there. I'm, I'm honestly I'm super intrigued I really cannot wait to read this one. And then the other one I want to read is Emma but I don't actually own it yet so we're gonna have a nice little picture up and again I think that will be the last Jane Austen book that I haven't read yet and I have really enjoyed all of them and what I would love to do is when I finish reading them is to then do a video where I rank all of her books because I've really enjoyed them so yes Emma is also on this list. I don't know what that one's about either but I have I've heard that a lot of people can't decide between Emma and Pride and Prejudice for their favourite Jane Austen so I'm really intrigued because I absolutely adored Pride and Prejudice. Then we have Classic Tales of Horror by Edgar Allan Poe. I will admit this is probably going to be one that I read later in the year, probably Halloween time. This is literally just I believe lots of short stories and I've never read anything by Poe so I'm really intrigued especially because of the fact that you know he is such a classic author not just with horror works although that is what I mainly know him for but I'm really intrigued. This one has the Telltale Heart in here, the Fall of House of Usher, the Black Cat, like there's so many ones that I'm really intrigued so yes it literally has themes of guilt, fear and revenge so sounds perfect. I can't believe I haven't read any of his books yet but I'm definitely intrigued to read this as said probably Halloween time but one that I can't wait plus this creepy cat just I mean come on it's just yeah it works. Then we have The Women in White by Wilkie Collins. This has been recommended to me by a few of you actually. When I was reading Rebecca and I said how much I loved that and it gave me like Jane Eyre vibes and you could definitely see the clear comparison. I had a couple people comment that if I like Jane Eyre and Rebecca I should really read The Woman in White because it has again those sort of themes. Now this is one that I would like to say I'm going to wait until October to read because that's when I read Rebecca but I'm really intrigued by this and I absolutely love Jane Eyre so I can't wait to actually get into this one so I may read it sooner than then but I don't know too much about it. It literally just says on a moonlit road in Hampstead Walter Hartwright is accosted by a stranger dressed from head to toe in white. She asks the way to London and no sooner has Walter directed her than he is overtaken by a carriage in pursuit of the mysterious woman who has evidently escaped from an asylum. From this single incident Walter unwinds a thrilling story of abduction, madness, false identity and shameful family secrets. I mean this is what I mean, it just sounds so good. I'm really really excited to read it. I can't believe I haven't actually read it before but yeah this is definitely high up on the list and like I said I would love to wait to October because it will fit those themes but will I? I, I just don't know. 
And then one which I did technically read years and years ago, but I can genuinely remember hardly anything about it. And that is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Lerox. This is such an amazing book from, again, from what I remember, which is not much, but it's one of those ones where it's just a pure classic and I just love the whole haunting thing of Phantom of the Opera. To be honest, I remember the film more than the book, which is why I want to reread this one. And it's all set in Paris, which is a perfect setting in my opinion. And we're literally following someone that lives within the opera house and he helps mentor a girl to be better at singing, but then things take a very sinister turn. Again, I could have this slightly wrong, but I just, I can't wait to read this. I really, really want to reread this soon. Again, this is another one that if I was good and I stuck with the theme of things, I would wait to October, but the reality is that's probably not going to happen, so. Then we have Tess D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. This is one that I picked up actually in like, May last year so I, I mean I've had it on my TBR for a while. I literally picked it up because of this awesome cover, the black sprayed edges. W. H. Smith were doing a few of these to celebrate their 225th anniversary. I haven't read this, I don't know too much what it's about, I've heard that it's meant to be really good. Thomas Hardy's meant to be a really good classic author and I haven't read any of his works so considering this is the one that I have I figured this is the place to start. And it literally says Tess is an innocent young girl until the day she goes to visit her rich relatives the D'Urbervilles in hope that they might help her alleviate her own family's poverty. Her encounter with a manipulative cousin Alec leads her on a path that is beset with suffering and betrayal. When she falls in love with another man, Angel Claire, Tess sees a potential escape from her past but only if she can tell him her shameful secret. I mean it sounds really good. It says it's first published in 1891. Thomas Hardy's tale of Victorian double standards was condemned by contemporary critics as immoral. Ooh, I like that. I'm so intrigued now. I really do want to read this. I'm going to be saying this a lot. I'm sorry. But yeah, it, it does sound really good and uh, as you will know, um, I found my love for classics this year. I never really used to read many of them and then that just changed and I'm in love with them. So yes, definitely cannot wait to start and then hopefully if I like his writing style, I can start collecting some of his other works. So let me know if Thomas Hardy, like what books of his you really like. I know there's quite a few, so yeah. Okay, then we have The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. Again, this is another one that I bought when I was on my classics buy and binge and I don't know too much about it I just believe we're with her uncle who is a toy maker and the only thing he loves to create is toys I mean the synopsis is actually really vague but it's a very short book so I don't mind that because I feel like if you go for a big synopsis on short books you're basically giving away the whole story I really love this cover though it is beautiful and definitely one I need to read soon then we have The Professor by Charlotte Bronte which I can't believe I haven't read yet this was actually on a TBR for this year and I just didn't get around to it but I desperately want to read this one and then read Villette because although Villette was published first the professor was written first so basically Villette is about this girl that falls in love with her professor um but Charlotte Bronte originally wrote it from the professor's perspective so I really want to read it in the order which she technically wrote them in which is reading the professor and then getting Villette so yes I'm so excited to read this I as I've already said in this video I love Jane Eyre so so much so I cannot wait to read this one and I'm so annoyed with myself that I haven't already this year but that is the last of the classic books that I want to get to obviously there are so many more but I didn't want to do the whole video just to classics so now we have a couple of historical fiction, no, yeah, historical fictions. And the first one up is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. This is a huge boy, like absolute huge, but I'm so excited to read it. So if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you'd know that I've read The Other Berlin Girl by Philippa Gregory and absolutely adored it. It's all about the Berlins, the Tudor time period, Henry VIII's wives. It's It was fantastic. I really loved it. And Wolf Hall is set in the exact same time period, but we're following Thomas Cresswell, who kind of brought about the fall of the Berlins. So Again, I just, yes, I loved this time period so, so much. And I have to thank so, quite a few people actually for introducing me to The Other Berlin Girl. It was just amazing. So you have Claire Fenbury, who again, I will have her channel linked below. And then also Chris over at Chris Reviews, I'll have her linked below, but both of them absolutely loved the other Berlin girl and I fell in love with it so when I then saw that there were more books set in that period I just that's it I want them I want them all can't wait to read this and yeah 
I'm thinking maybe even a buddy, buddy read with Chris if she feels up for it because she wants to read this one as well. Chris, if you're watching this, fancy a buddy read? <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited to get to this one. Then I have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is a book that I literally just picked up in a charity shop and I don't know anything about it. I just know that it was going around on Bookstagram for ages with everyone having so much hype for this story. I'm intrigued. I believe it's more like portal fantasy. So as the ward of the wealthy Mr. Locke, January Scala feels little different from the artifacts that decorate his sprawling mansion, carefully maintained, largely ignored and utterly out of place. But when she finds a strange book, one that tells a tale of secret doors of love, adventure and danger for the first time, January realises she can escape her so story and sneak into someone else's. I mean, that sounds beautiful. I love this cover. It is just stunning. So yeah, I'm hoping that I can get on the hype train that everybody else had for this book. And again, we have technically another reread, but one that I have forgotten everything about. And that is Danfer by Bob and C and JC Hendy. This is a book that actually my dad got me when I was little. I say little, just younger. Um, I've always been little. He's massively into vampires and I will admit he is the person that influenced my love of gothic, just gothic books in general. Like he's the one that introduced me to all of that and I did love it. I did read this book and I read the second book, but to be honest, I think I was too young to actually appreciate these books. And I found these in Forbidden Planet on sale for like 99 pence. And I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about this series. Like it's always stayed with me. So I'm like, I would really love to reread it and actually read the whole series so that is the plan and yeah I really want to make sure I actually do that because again this is something that I bought earlier in the year but haven't actually got round to yet so putting it on this TBR will make me pick it up th in 2022 so yeah I'm really excited this is literally about a damn fair so half human half a vampire and her and her old friend go around kind of conning people out of their money by slaying vampires until they meet a real vampire so it is one of those, it is a bit funny at the start and then it is quite a dark book and yeah. From what I remember, I think I'm going to love it now that I'm older. So yeah, can't wait to actually get to this one. Okay, now we have a book that's been on so many TBR videos. It's ridiculous and I still haven't read it yet. And that is Master of Sorrows by Justin Call. The second book has come out and I still have not even read the first book. <laughs> it is a book that I really, really think I'm going to love. We are following someone that has been brought up around magic and but now is, I think it's in a convent or some sort of like learning religious sort of thing which then says you know magic is really bad and he needs to kind of stamp it out and persecute people that have magic and this is all about a villain's origin story so i'm so intrigued ashley from a frolic through fiction absolutely adored this book and i got it based on her recommendation and i've been meaning to read it for ages it just for some reason on my tbrs it's always the last one i get to and by that point the month is over and i never carry it on into the next month so this is me going i am going to read this 100% because I, I know I'm going to love it. And I think what is I've just, over the past few months, I've kind of fallen out of love with fantasy books. Like I've been struggling with them a little bit. And I think because sometimes they can just be a little bit too repetitive and YA fantasy in particular, I'm finding that with. So that's why I kind of veered of course and went mainly for like retellings or classic books because that's what I was enjoying the most. But I know that this is going to be one that I think it's gonna be up there with Name of the Wind for me in terms of how much I'm going to love it. But that's also what scares me because I think I'm gonna enjoy it so much, but it's on this TBR, it's going to happen. Then we have a huge tome and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This is a book that I am honestly so excited to read because I adored Night Circus by Erin Morganston. I thought that was a fantastic book and this book gives me Night Circus vibes. It's just huge. It's huge and that's what's scaring me about this. I read Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, absolutely adored that book. It is a lot shorter and I picked that one up because I wanted to see if I would like her writing style, which I do. I thought it was fantastic. So I really want to actually read this one. It is about two magicians who are having this cool f competition between the two of them, very similar to Night Circus vibes. So I just, 
I need to pick this up. I need to stop being scared about the size and just do it because it's one meant to be so popular and so good and I know I'm going to love it. So, but this is one that I actually want to read soon. I would like to read it in like January, February time because I feel like reading this in the colder months is going to be the perfect setting for me. Then we have another book which I don't own yet and that's The Tunnel of Bones by V.E. Schwab. That's the second book in the City of Ghosts series. So this is a middle grade that V.E. Schwab has done and I really enjoyed it actually. We were following this girl who can see ghosts and her parents are ghost hunters. Like they believe in ghosts and they have this whole TV show about it and they do all these books on it and stuff and in that first book they go to Edinburgh. This girl, poor thing, is surrounded by ghosts because obviously Edinburgh is a spooky place to be and she is then dealing with all the fallout on that. I thought it was a really cute fun read. It was really easy to read and I love the humour in it as well. Honestly for me it was perfect. That's the sort of middle grade I would read. I don't read much middle grade but that is the sort of one that I would read. So I definitely want to actually continue with that and read the second book. So again that's the reason why it's on this list because it's just to prompt me into actually finishing it. Because it's middle grade I tend not to think about them so I tend not to pick them up but this is one that I know I'm really going to enjoy. Again it's got those cutesy gothic feels to it which I'm, I'm just a sucker for so yeah excited to read that one. Then we have Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This and The Illuminae Files are books that I've been meaning to get into for ages so I read Skyward by Brandon Sampson. Absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic and I think those books are perfect. It's a YA sci-fi which I never thought I would actually enjoy but I did. I loved it and then so many people were like well if you've enjoyed that you really should try Aurora Rising or the Illumifle Files. Both of them are hugely popular YA sci-fi series and the only reason why I got Aurora Rising instead of Illumino Files the purple edges. I'm not gonna lie, that won it hands down for me. And again, this has been on a TBR that I just didn't get round to. So we're following our main character who is late to pick in his team for the cadets. He is someone that is top of his class, should have had first pick, but he was helping someone out, so he was late. So he gets the dregs and he kind of creates this team and everything. All I know is that the third book recently has come out, everyone's raving about it, and I really, really want to read this, especially because I really enjoyed the found family vibes that you got in Skyward, and I'm hoping that this has the same. So yeah, I'm not a massive fan of adult sci-fi, but YA sci-fi is where it's at. Though speaking of adult sci-fi, I do actually want to get Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I have really enjoyed the trilogy. I think it's really good, but it's also a mixture of genres. So you have sci-fi elements, you have dystopian elements, and you have normal fantasy elements. I think it's really good, really interesting. I love the characters and the way it's been built. We're literally in this world where there is now a fifth season. So it's our world, but set way in the future. And when this fifth season happens, it basically just rips apart the earth. And everyone has been living to prepare for this. So everyone's used to it happening and stuff, and they spend their whole lives preparing for it. As a result, society's kind of broken down and you get put into what you're meant to do to help society to survive in the event of a fifth season. There are also these people called origins which are they have kind of magical elements to do with the earth and they can kind of control it but because of that there's a lot of people that fear them because they believe that they are the reason why it's all happened hang on a minute my camera battery's flashing okay we're back so as i was saying yeah origins so they are kind of, instead of what i would think they would be kind of supportive stuff because they can help tamper down all of these earthquakes instead they are hunted um so i think it's a really interesting world i really like it i like the where it's going so i'm intrigued to see how it's actually going to finish up which again because it's more adult sci-fi dystopian it's one that i don't necessarily think about when i'm planning my tbrs so having it on here is going to prompt me to actually pick it up and read it. And then we have a manga series that I do want to continue and that's Tokyo Ghoul. So I've read the first two books in this series and I have up to number 11 and I really do want to continue this. Again this is something that's just easy to read, nice 
put on my TBRs, especially if I've got some bigger books that month, it just breaks everything up a little bit. And this is all about a world where there are ghouls, which are basically zombies, because they want to eat you. And our main character in the first one has this date with this girl, and she ends up being a ghoul, and he then gets dragged into their world. I really liked the second one as well, because you've got to explore more about the ghouls, their way of life. So it's one that, I, again, I do really want to read, but manga's also something that I read if I'm in a slump, because it worked perfectly to get me out of one. Again, if I've got quite a few big books on my TBR and I just think I'm not going to be able to get them all done. Otherwise it's not something I tend to pick up as much or I'll go for like the manga classics rather than this but I do want to actually finish this so yeah. Oh my god then we have a book that I pre-ordered in oh my god it might even been 2020 and I've still not read and that's The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry. I love Christina Henry. She is an autobite author for me. I've loved all of her works. She does a lot of books that are horror retellings of different classics. So you've got Alice, you've got Bahita Pan retelling, A Little Mermaid retelling, like there's so many. And she's also done Near the Bone, which I really liked, which was just a purely horror book. And I think The Ghost Tree, again, is not a strict retelling, but is just more of a horror book, which again, I know I'm going to enjoy because it's all about this dark, creepy forest. Like, you can't go wrong with that. But for some reason, I just, I never pick it up. So this is me forcing myself to actually read it this year because I know I'm going to enjoy it, but I just keep putting it off for some reason. I don't know why, but I've got into my head that this is meant to be a really young read. And I don't know why I'm even getting that because Christina Henry is a horror author. So, you know, but I really want to read this. I really do. Again, this is, I think it's been on TBR or I've been talking about the fact that I've been meaning to read it, but either way it needs to be done. I need to read this book. So definitely going to. Let me know if you've read this one and what you thought about it because I've read all her other ones apart from The Horseman, which is her newest one out, which I haven't read yet. I just, I need to get on it. Then we have a book which I picked up ages ago, yet again, and that is Blood Orange by Harriet Tice. This is one that I've been meaning to read for a little while. I've heard good things about it. You don't see it too often. It's just one I've seen occasionally and one of the girls that I worked with has actually read this one so and she quite liked it it's one of those ones where it's just a fast easy easy read and it's intriguing I don't know too much about it it literally just says Alison has it all a loving family and a career on the rise she's just been given her first murder case to defend but all is never as it seems and that's literally all it says so I don't even know what it's about I think it is just more of a thriller but we'll see I just honestly I mainly got it for the cover like it was so beautiful it's bright orange and I think this is one that I got on Amazon for like 99 pence or something like that. So yeah, I, I need to read it. And then another book that I bought as soon as it was published, and that's The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond, but I've still not read this. Actually, my mum's read it and she liked it, but she wasn't as impressed by the ending, which I think put me off for a little while. But then recently, Christina over at Christina Campbell Reads, who I have linked below, she read this, did a review of it and absolutely adored it, gave it five stars. So I'm just like, well, now I really need to pick this up because generally speaking, I trust Christina when it comes to thrillers, mysteries. She's always on it. It's where I tend to get most of my recommendations from. And the fact that she said, you know, she really enjoyed this one has made me go, okay, I need to actually pick this book up. So again, this is one that I'm planning to read soon because of the fact that she enjoyed it so much. And I really do like these end pages. Like, look at that. That is so cool. But this is basically a murder mystery set in a retirement home where we have this group that comes together every Thursday to talk about different murders and stuff that have happened and they try and do their solving and sleuthing and stuff um, until an actual murder act happens and they are on the case. It just sounds hilarious. He's actually had his second book out and I would like to get it if I like this one but... I need to know if I like it first before I go and get the second one. Although now I'm tempted just to pick it up because of the fact that Christina has liked the first one and she really wants to get the second one straight away. So either way, I definitely need to read this. Editing Kirsten just cutting in here. Yes, looking ridiculous right now because we've just had a shower after work and uh, editing this video and realised that um, that was not 22 books, that was 21. The 22nd book is actually Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the second book in the Diviners Quartet, which is a series that I fell in love with. Well, 
I can't actually say that. I fell in love with the first book and picked it up on the recommendation of a few different people, but the main one being Chris over at Chris Reviews yet again. And it is set in 1920s New York with a very occult themes to it, which I absolutely adored. There is a series of murders that are happening and they're very occult based. And our main character gets involved because her uncle, who has a museum on all things occult, gets called in for his expertise and just to see if he can shed any light on it. However, our main character has a secret that when she touches a object, she can get snippets of things that have happened to that person. Alongside this, we have a few different characters that all have different abilities tied with it. And you know what? The setting is amazing. I love the characters. It's just fantastic. So I really want to carry on with this series in 2022 as well. So... Now we can get back to the end of the video. Okay, well that was all 22 books that I want to read in 2022. Let me know if there's any ones that I should definitely be prioritizing out of these. What ones have you read and absolutely loved or any of these that you want to get to? I am so excited. I know I've said that pretty much about every single book because they are on my TBR. I think at some point I might actually do a TBR video of how many books are actually on my TBR because there's like in the 80s. It is getting a bit extreme. I'm trying to get through them but I also just don't seem to stop buying books. But yeah, let me know. I think what I'm going to do is for all of these 22 books I'm actually going to put them in my little bag of books that I have that when I don't finish my TBR for that month I pull out an extra read and I think all 22 of these are going to be in that so obviously they may get put on TBRs on their own but at least it's a way to make sure I do get through some of these and I don't forget to put them on there we'll see we'll see what happens um anyway if you made it this far thank you very much um, and let's put what emoji should we have today let's put a cat because I like cats. So let's go with a cat emoji if you managed to make it this far. Uh, but other than that, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. My social media links and everyone that I've mentioned will be linked below. And I will, of course, catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.